When it comes to garden planning, there is no one fit for all rule. As many gardeners there are, that many opinions exist as well. Some people are intuitive gardeners. They just walk in their garden and decide on the spot. And some are very detail-oriented. I always like to have a plan. That doesn't mean I'll stick to it, but at least it will serve me as a guide. With good planning, I can do more than one harvest from the same garden space and also I noticed that it saves some money because with good planning, I can have my own seedlings instead of buying starts from garden centers. And today I would like to share with you what steps I make when planning my garden and in the end of the video, I'll share with you my garden plan for 2022. And the first step I think every gardener should do is to figure out how much space you have, measure and calculate square footage of your garden, and that way you will know how many seeds to sow and how many seedlings you will have room for. If you have raised beds, that's a very easy Thing to do. I have approximately 250 square feet for growing annuals. After you figured out how much space you have, you need to take a look at your seeds and see which ones you are missing and possibly make an order or go to a garden center and purchase some. Then you need to categorize your seeds by their growing needs so cool season vegetables separately, warm season separate. For example, uh, you may need to plant your tomato, peppers and eggplants at certain time and the other vegetables you have to plant later. Depending on when is your last spring frost, you will need to count back weeks for each vegetable and fruit and flower to when to sow your seeds. As you can see here, I had categorized my vegetables the way I need them to start. So I have basils um, together with some tomatoes because they will go in the garden together. Also, I will grow all of my cool season veggies like cabbages, I'll grow them separately. Usually I start all of my tomatoes, peppers and eggplants in the end of January. Around the same time I start my kales and lettuces, but kales and lettuces will go out in the garden in March and tomatoes and peppers will wait until May. Next important thing in garden planning are supplies. If you want to build new raised beds, you'll have to get your supplies now because in the early spring there is maybe a shortage of garden supplies. So make sure you have enough seedling trays, seed pellets, soil and other things necessary to start your garden. This may also include grow lights, heat mats, fertilizers and other things. Depending on the scale of your garden, you may need different things. Plan ahead and think what you may need in the middle of your growing season so you don't have to rush to the garden center when your time is limited. I know when soil warms up and I can go and play in the garden I don't want to go and do shopping. So please save your valuable springtime and go do some shopping now, get everything you need and be ready for your gardening season. Another important factor in garden planning is succession. In order to do that, you will need to have seedlings ready when you pull out one crop. As you can see here, I had spinach, garlic and potatoes growing in this bed and then when I pulled them out, I had my cucumber seedlings ready to go in. So from the middle of June, 
I had cucumbers growing in this bed and I had a beautiful harvest. Take a look how many different cucumbers I had growing in there. This was my Chicago pickling cucumber. I also had some Persian cucumbers growing. I really like those as well. And my favorite was lemon cucumber. It looked and tasted great. I think I had like five different varieties of cucumbers growing in that one little garden bed. And they've been there until September. In September, I pulled them out and planted some radishes, mizuna, mustard, and I don't even remember what else. This is how it looked in October. By the end of the month, I was already harvesting some radishes. And I also had beautiful green salad leaves growing in this bed. So that's how succession works. With planning, you can have three harvests, even if you have short gardening season. You just have to make sure that by the time you pull out one crop from the bed, you already have seedlings ready to go in there. Or you can plant some fast growing uh, vegetables, for example, arugula, radishes, and leafy greens. They grow pretty much fast. In a matter of months, you have something to eat. Also, don't forget to plant things according to their season. Don't try to grow radishes in the middle of hot summer. Now let's talk about companion planting. Why it's important? Because if you do it right, you will benefit all of the plants growing together. You will be able to prevent certain diseases and pests. For example, you can sow carrots early in the season. They are cool growing vegetables. I do mine in March. At that time, my tomatoes are still indoors under the lights. And then when my tomatoes are ready to be transplanted in May, carrots are already growing. And by the time tomatoes will be big enough for harvest and they will be shading all of the garden bed, at that time carrots will be out of there and I will not have to worry about the shade that tomatoes are casting. So companion planting is not only benefiting the plants that are growing together, but it also benefits me as a gardener because it saves me space. I have a small garden and I like to utilize every inch of it. Same over here. Take a look at these radishes. They are almost ready to come out. And by the time they come out, the cabbage will have room to grow. Right now, cabbage is small, but you know it gets bigger and bigger while it's growing. So while it's small, I can have a harvest of radishes. And there is already a tomato behind the cabbage. So when the cabbage will be out of here in a month or two, tomato will have room to grow. By that time, tomato will get bigger and will require a lot of space. And by that time, I'm not going to have all of these leafy greens around. It will be too hot for them. Don't be afraid to do interplanting. Experiment and make sure to take some notes so you know next season what worked for you and what didn't. The best way is to learn on our own mistakes. And the last thing I would like to talk about before I show you my personal garden plan for 2022 is family needs. So what I mean by that is please grow what you like, what your family eats. I make vegetable smoothie every morning for my family and I use spinach for it. So I always try to plant a lot of it and usually I plant a few different varieties of spinach because one of it um, sprouts earlier, the other one 
lasts longer so they have different qualities and sometimes we can't eat all of it of course but i can always freeze spinach and for example even right now in the middle of winter i am still using my spinach from the garden that i froze in the summer my kids really like peas so i make sure i always grow some in the spring and then later in the fall i grow it again because peas likes cool weather and it doesn't grow well in hot also we all love potatoes here in our house so even though i have small garden i still like to grow a little bit of potatoes because there is nothing better than those young or new potatoes with some butter and dill mm, yum can't wait for the summer to come i also like some hot peppers so i make sure to grow a few varieties every year and now i would like to share with you how i do my garden planning this is my personalized planner i saw the idea on one of the channels i follow on youtube but i changed it a little bit to make it work for me so i draw a layout of my garden um, for each month and then i write down what i am transplanting what seedlings go in each raised bed and also what things I will be directly sowing in there. And I drew not just raised beds but also in-ground growing spaces and all of my containers. So in March I wrote everything with a red colored permanent marker and then for each month I will be doing it in different color and I will explain why because take a look at the April I transferred all of the things that I had planted earlier in March they will be still growing in there in those raised beds and then in April I will add some flowers in those raised beds so I add them with my pink marker that way I know what's new and what was growing from before for next month I'm going to be using different color marker and in May my tomatoes, eggplants and peppers are coming out and by that time some of those things that I had planted in March will be out of those beds for example radishes, mibuna, mizuna they will be out of there and in their place peppers, tomatoes and eggplants will go I may change some things later on as I go, but the main idea is to plan how many seedlings you will need and to have enough seedlings to cover up all of the space you have. This is how I get ready for my gardening season and how I plan my garden design. You don't have to do what I do, just make sure you have fun and you are enjoying both the planning and the gardening itself because that's why we do the gardening to make our life more interesting more fun more healthy gardening is a therapy it's a medicine it's a hobby it's everything for us so enjoy it i hope my video will help you in some way Thank you for watching, see you next time.